Hey guys, Football Fans Life is back from another exciting weekend of football action all across Europe. Thank you for joining us. Stable Adi Banjo is my name. You are watching Pulse TV and this is Football Fans Life. I've said that already, but yes, just in case you're watching and joining us for the first time. Now, interestingly and a bit sadly, football fans held banter fire all over the weekend as everything went on pretty much as planned. Arsenal set the tone with that win over Tottenham at the Emirates. 2 0 it ended. And of course, Chelsea, Manchester United, and their noisy neighbours, Manchester City. Um, lately, I don't think they've been so noisy because they've been walking the talk. But hey, they also got a win, um, a convincing win, I would say. But it still doesn't mean that there isn't a lot to talk about um, around these performances. And we, of course, have fans who will be joining us talking about their favourite teams. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's start um, with a quick trip to Spain, where, of course, Barcelona defeated Leganes 3-0 um, that ended. We saw Luis Suarez banish those demons of Profilgese in front of goal as he got a brace. There was also a customary 90th minute winner from Paulino. It's becoming his trend. And of course, it, it got even better because in a Madrid derby, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid played out a barren draw, which now means Barcelona are 10 points ahead of those Madrid teams. And all is well with the world, ladies and gentlemen. And I think Ayala can agree with me. <laughs> yes, all I really certainly do. is well with the world. 10 points clear, that must feel really, really good. Uh, it's not exactly 10 points clear because there's still Valencia, Valencia. in between us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the only thing we have to worry about for now. I guess everybody is thinking Valencia will drop off at a point. And if there's anybody to pose a real challenge, as it's been in the past five years, six, seven, it's, it's Real Madrid. So 10 points clear ahead of Real Madrid, except you don't reach Real Madrid. Uh, of course I do, okay. but we have to always think about the present danger of Valencia because uh, when Atletico won the league, it was the same thing everybody was saying. Atletico would drop off, they would drop off, but they didn't. So we still have to worry about Real Madrid, uh, we, or rather about Valencia. Valencia. And we're also very happy about Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid <laughs> also <laughs> dropping very points. Happy. Very happy. <laughs> Ten <laughs> points. It's a lot of um, room and space to maybe yeah. falter here and there. Yes, speaking of that, you think at any point Barcelona will let this late slide? It happened, I believe, three seasons ago when they had this very huge gap. About 10, too, if I'm not mistaken, a Real Madrid mm. cut-off. Was it three or two seasons ago? No, I don't, I don't think uh, it has ever been this large and we lost it. I think the largest ever was seven. Okay. But um, we came close to losing a nine-point lead oh. two seasons ago, but we and eventually still hung on to win the league. Okay. So I think I think we're pretty safe from Real this Madrid and Atletico. And, and for you being pretty safe, are you sure it's it's Barcelona's quality at this point or it's the fact that Real Madrid just don't have their house together? Mm, I think it's a bit of both. Okay. Because usually we'd be neck and neck trying to see who is better until we get to the classical mm -hmm. and that is really the decider. Which decides a lot. But this season we've beaten Sevilla, Villarreal, drawn with Atletico, where well, Madrid have been dropping points Literally everywhere, everywhere, everywhere that they can, can't win, win away, nothing. <laughs> so I think it's been a bit of both. Okay, so um, I think we should talk about the influence um, of, of the manager in here. Yes, everybody says Barcelona is built around <laughs> Messi, and they're right. Uh, but <laughs> the point is, he seems to have, to have put in his, his touch, obviously, in the team. First, Barcelona have, have changed, have tinkered, he's tinkered with the, with the squad mm -hmm. a lot of times this season. Most mm -hmm. people think it will backfire. Everybody wants to see the same start in 11, match in, match out. But it seems to be working. His effect certainly is something we must acknowledge, right? Yes, we have to. I mean, he. one thing I like, like about him is he takes every game as it comes. He doesn't just put out the same team and expect some messy magic. He really thinks about the opponent that he's about to play. And um, you can see him sometimes, he plays three at the back. Sometimes he plays with two in midfield, sometimes two in attack. Yeah. And I think it's really helping the team because even though it's hard not to build a team around Messi because, I mean, Messi, he's, he's a, Messi. He's a genius. <laughs> and he still somehow managed to bring out the best in other players. Players like Denis Suarez, players like uh, Dolefeu, yeah. even Paulinho yeah. have all, you know, chipped in at one point or the other. So I think... He's doing a He's really doing good job. job. Speaking of Paulino in there, I mean, when he signed for Barcelona, there was a oh. literal meltdown. I thought this finished player, I mean, all, yes, from the Brazilian league, but when he made that move to Brazil, nobody expected that was where his career was. His not so bright career mm -hmm. at that point was going to, to, to end up. We expected some development of some sort. Then he went to Brazil and we thought he was finished. Then he came to Barcelona. We still thought he was finished. And he, he, well, he's been proven 
you know, people run lately. Yes, he what really exactly has does he bring to that midfield? And let's not forget his scoring goals as well. A lot. So, so what exactly does it bring that is different? Uh, well, to be honest, when he signed, I think I was one of the people that was almost going crazy. Yeah, wondering what Twitter. was... <laughs> what's, what's your Twitter handle again? Uh, Ayola underscore Kelechi. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think I was going crazy because I couldn't understand why or what he was going to bring in. I didn't think he could pass. I didn't think he could <laughs> do any Barcelona-like thing. <laughs> but here he is, and he has brought um, an added, should I say, steel to the midfield. He definitely brings that. Uh, when, for example, we're ahead, he's someone who we can bring on, and uh, he's getting the ball back. He's putting pressure on other players. He's really he's showing that he's really trying to work hard for his place in the team, and I think... He's getting some great benefit from it. From uh, absolutely. It. You spoke about his passing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the steal is something you, you want a, a defensive minded midfielder, so to speak, to bring, definitely. How about the passing? Does he, at any point, you know, start build up play, for instance? Does he make the work of the guys in front of him very easier? Is it, is it something in his game he's, he's totally achieved now in that Barcelona esque mode, or is something he's still going to work on? Um, I think, in terms of being more Barcelona esque, he still has to work on some things. But the things that he has going for him right now are things that, are, that we've not seen in most Barcelona midfielders. His strong running with the ball, going past players, you know, not in the way Iniesta does to drag players in, but he's just running at the other defence and it's really giving them a hard time. And he's always, somehow, he finds a way to be on the right end of uh, maybe a yeah, messy pass yeah, or, or, rebound or a rebound or something. Or something. He just... In his the box. Positioning basically yes. is, he's quite aware. Yeah. That, that is really good. Um, so we've spoken about Valverde and how he's not tried to build the team around anybody aside from Messi and Messi himself. Are we trying to say if Messi picks up you know, an injury, one he's beginning to have lately, or like before, the team will thrive without him? Do you think the manager has been working all along from the start of the season for that time when Messi is just not hitting it at crucial times in the season anymore? Um, I don't think that's something any Barcelona coach would be hoping for or thinking about. But as we've seen in the past, most times when Messi is injured, we hope for someone else to step up. In the past, it was Neymar. So this season that we don't have Neymar anymore, mm. I, I really... Baby, right? I mean, it could be. He's, he, he's young, but he's still very, very good. He's someone that he has so much talent. True. And with the right um, direction, I don't think but there's, there's any... He's, he's, he's been injured. He's yeah, been injured for a while. So I'm expecting that when he gets back, with or hopefully with Messi, he can learn a few things and really polish up his game. For now, he's really good. He's really good and he's really raw talent. So um, when he gets back, we'll see. We'll see. But one person we are a bit sure he's not going to take that runs when you know Messi drops it is Luis Suarez. What's up with him? Though? Oof. I, I, I don't know. Even he can't explain it. <laughs> I read an interview recently where he was talking about his form recently and he said he couldn't explain it. It's just one of those things that happens to footballers that, you know, he's not just hitting it right. Mm -hmm. Where We saw in the last match he was able to get two goals, but the goals were a bit scrappy. Yeah. And it shows just um, one thing, that his striker's instinct is still there. He still knows to be around the danger areas, but what he has been lacking lately is more of technique. We see um, sometimes he gets the ball and he can't even pass to the next man. <laughs> and you're wondering when, yeah, how, when did this start? Or well, sometimes he might just hit a shot and it's going... Very unlike him. Very unlike him. So, so if he doesn't get that form right back, I mean, to be, to be honest, he said he doesn't know what's happening. So we can't really expect him to be... Um, to, to all of a sudden bring out that form out of nowhere or lead Barcelona when Messi isn't around. Mm. So can I conclude... That right now we are waiting, we are hoping that Messi, Barcelona fans precisely, we're hoping that Messi stays fit yes. almost through the season yes. or that we already can pull up some juniors kind of work. I'm sure like for most of us it's part of our Sunday prayer list <laughs> <laughs> for Messi to stay fit. Yeah. But I also trust in Valverde that he has the tactical know-how to know how to chop and change and who to bring in. And he also has this thing where um, he's really good at inspiring players. Mm -hmm. Even players that haven't been on such top form, players like Jordi Alba, yeah. who wasn't so great last season, he's coming to the, come back into the side and, and it's, it's fantastic. Okay. So I think um, I trust Valverde okay. in, in case of... Okay, thank you very much, Ayala. But <laughs> thank my you final very much. question before I let you go. 
realistically, just with the numbers mm -hmm. right now, how many trophies do you think Barcelona can get this season, realistically? Three. Three? Three. The Champions League? Yes, the League and the Copa del Rey. That's quite interesting. <laughs> you were here now do you you can you can you can see I'm, you can see you can see the vibe the heat from I can see the heat <laughs> yeah what's up to our my chelsea fans out there Nathan, good luck back to be here mm -hmm. the uh, good to see you man yes, always see. looking nice thank you very much <laughs> and it's chelsea your chelsea looking nice chelsea the moment? sky is blue blue <laughs> Are they looking nice the yeah, definitely. I mean, um, disappointing game against um, Roma. You must say um, David Luiz had to see that game against Manchester United, and um, Christensen had to start. Good one for them. Now and it looks like it looks like David Luiz might be out of that team for a while. Do you agree? Um, he's still not starting. In Conte's post-match interview after the game against Manchester United, he said David Luiz's um, future in Chelsea is un uncertain. Definitely, is actually uncertain right now. Christensen, he's young, he's vibrant, he's He's consistent, let's put it that way. And definitely, uh, I, I, I think David Luiz might still be on the bench. I'm not really sure about that. But him going, the likes of um, Manchester United now calling up for him to... I, I don't think he will go to mind. He wouldn't want to do that. Probably with time, he would get back into the team. But I'm um, looking at the match against West Brom. Four goals. Eden Hazard had a brace. Uh, Van Morata on the scoring sheet. Eight goals for him now. Good one for him. Yeah. Marco Alonso also on the scoring sheet. You see Chelsea, they're actually enjoying themselves now. Um, they've got back to the, four, uh, the, win, the winning yeah. spirit right yeah. now. You know? Would you say N'Golo Kante is that guy who is making Chelsea express himself a bit more? It seems like an obvious question, quite alright. But maybe I should ask if N'Golo Kante probably picks up another knock, so to speak. Do, uh, you, do you think that Chelsea will struggle again? When <laughs> that's a very difficult one to ask. In his absence, six games without Ngolo Kante, um, Chelsea they won three, they lost two, and they drew one. Um, definitely three losses or something. Definitely, that's what I'm saying. So he's been a major. Um, he has played a major role. Sorry, in Chelsea, it was a sensational move from Leicester City, winning um, the uh, EPL with Leicester and Chelsea back to back. To yeah, Chelsea definitely. Then? So I think um, he's, he's he's just his performance so far has been. Ah, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. So, so he's, certainly, it's phenomenal. he's certainly key for Chelsea's major, major, major key. Bakayoko definitely, you know, we saw his performance in uh, Monaco before swi um, switching to Chelsea. Uh, but there was this um, 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 speech he yeah. made about him better than... But I don't think it's ab 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 about the media. Uh, I, I don't think it's about the media because he didn't just mention Kante. He mentions other few French players alongside Kante. But they brought out Kante. Paul, Paul Pogba as well. <laughs> <laughs> look, about, look about Pogba, you see he's back now, he's doing well. So I think for France, going to the World Cup, sorry I'm bringing that in, yeah, Lokanti probably really will, pay, will play a major role in, in the French team. Um, Antonio Conte, he's happy, you can see that. And now Victor Moses is back, he's I'm happy. Back. He's <laughs> back as well. Yeah. So how long can, can, can Chelsea be, be happy for, so to speak? I mean, how, how, how next? I mean, it looks like they've steadied the ship. Yeah. The question is, can they, can they keep this further? The major problem or issue a, any coach or team would obviously would have is um, their, their ability for their players, their key players, to be fit. fit. Now, Varmorata is fit. Michi Bashua is out for about four weeks. Now, we have likes of um, Aspilicueta, Divi Sabacosta, filling that um, uh, um, space for Victor Moses in absence, and he's doing fantastic there. So, I think if everybody's actually fit in all positions, Marco Alonso, Cahill, um, um, Chris Nitti, David Lewis is on the bench, that's even a plus for Chelsea in terms of the, <laughs> the, the defensive. See, see, that's the thing with Nathan. Nathan has all but told us that Chelsea have only a starting 11 and not the bench. No, 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 no. I, 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 I didn't. I did not say that. I'm saying if we are fit now, looking at looking at it right now, Chris Hinton now is starting ahead of David Lewis. My point exactly is in all positions, we are having marquee players that can always come up. To, so if um, Chris Hinton is out, we know that we we'll surely have a David Lewis very solid at the back, he knows how to do it well. Bakayoko, Unglo Kante, even Danny Drinkwater is also in, in the mix. Says Fabregas, we know what he does. What he does on a very good day yeah. with his passes, long passes, short yeah. passes, definitely. Hidden Hazard, um, Pedro, William, Varmota. Now, my only issue I have is that um, Rata would have to be, you know, 
filling the void for Michi Bashwai for that four weeks to be out because I mean if you look at he's, it, he's going to start anyway. <laughs> I mean Michi won't start. Uh, so yeah, I'm, start. I'm saying and in terms of you know replacement because you don't want your your players to be fatigued or jet lagged yeah, or whatever. Right. Yeah, that, so, that's a good point. yeah, and a good point. going into the match against Karabag th um, this week is an is a must win for Chelsea for the fact that now Roma they are trying they won that game you know yeah, so I, right. I would want to see Chelsea win that game. Against against anyway, Karabakh. Anyway, he wants to see Chelsea win. I think I think it's been very good having Nathan, full of energy as always. I mean, and I'm sure he'll be back here definitely. maybe if if they don't beat Karabakh. Okay, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, Devola. Good to finally get on your show. <laughs> uh, so he, like, twice, but finally it's good to have you, Freaky. Good to be here. Arsenal got a good win over the weekend. I mean, one that brought all of the fans together, one that got the Arsenal social media handle trolling journalists who thought that, you know, Arsenal were pretty much going to be useless against Tottenham. Uh, but would you, would, would you say it was Arsenal just fighting back because the chips were down again, or looking at the balance of things um, when it comes to strength? Over the course of the season, Arsenal just have a better balanced team than Tottenham. So a win was always on the cards. You can never write off Arsenal. That's, 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 that's like an unwritten rule. You can never write off Arsenal because um, something I tweeted before the game was that this was um, Arsene Wenger's best squad. I put it in parentheses on paper. So the challenge usually with us now is transferring that strength from paper onto the pitch. So, the, I mean, it was nothing very surprising to see us not. I mean, there was barely a weakness in that team from, yeah. the, from the defensive line. Um, defensively, I think that's the best we've seen us now play. And I yeah. think that, that should be um, Wenger's first choice going forward. And, and of course, the, the front three, really, there's, there's really nothing to add. A brilliant theory of Mesut Ozil, Alexis Sanchez and Alexandra um, Lacazette. No surprise in there that the last two games they started, now three. Arsenal got a win in all of those games. So the question is, why aren't they starting off on it? And, and should it just be the way Arsenal should go? You, know? um, you need to ask um, Asen Wenger what the plan is. But every time you see Ozil, Lacazette, Sanchez on the pitch, it's, it's so much passing, so much movement, so much skill, yeah. so much ability in there. You feel anything is going to happen at any time, sure. you know. But I don't know. It's, I, I, like, again, it's left to Wenger why he's not picking that phone three more frequently. But I hope in subsequent games to see them, you know, develop that chemistry. But again, I think um, at the back of Wenger's mind, yeah. He's um, thinking, will Ozil be here beyond January, true, beyond... So, so team, yeah, yeah, exactly. So he doesn't want to um, be too real, um, reliant on that front three and just trying to play around everything. But, I mean, whenever that front three gets on the pitch, it's magic. Now that is an interesting angle because lots of people... I don't think I've ever thought about it that way. Maybe yeah. because... Venga is a very brilliant mind. So yeah, I've, I've never thought about it that way yeah. because at a point, I think it was Sanchez out injured, Ozil later on got injured. Like I said, we don't exactly know why he isn't starting. But mm. Venga has showed that he can tweak the team around certain times. Sometimes it has paid off, other mm. times it hasn't. But what would you say is your best starting eleven? Did you see your best starting eleven against... Bruce that was it in the North London Derby. That was... That's as far as I know. So, I mean, for me, all I'll take... Mu all season long. All season long. I'll take Mustafi over Metasaka in that okay. back line. And then Bellerin, really, I don't think we have an alternative for... Yeah. We can't put in um, Riz Nelson there. Mm -hmm. Left wing, Kolasna has that nailed down. In the midfield, Ramsey, Shaka, and then the front three. That's... That's... I mean... How about the substitutions in here? We saw um, the first substitution happen yesterday. Also, for Alex Wilby, some people would have said, "Oh, Jack Wilshere should have come on." Is it a case of Asin Wenger has given Jack Wilshere his his time, so to speak, in the past? Let another new player go in, or it will be is that guy whom Arsenal need to start building on going forward? Um, I don't know. I I think um, it was a very tactical game. At a point, we're wasting chances, and then I, I think Wenger got tired of all of that. And like, okay, they brought in Coquelin to sit in because Ari Wings came in. I don't think Musa Dembele was fit, and then Dembele and Sissoko in the midfield was all muscle yeah. and not no real graft. Yeah. Do you understand? So then, when Wings came in, he started controlling the midfield. So the, um, Wenger had to bring in Coquelin to sit on Wings in mm -hmm. stabilize it. So I, I think. Um, there was no need attacking a lot because I mean there was a lot of attacking and there were no goals. Yeah. So, what well, we just sit back and just protect what we have and 
you know, see the game out. So I think that's what Wenger did. It was a very so something very tactical. I mean, usually you'd want to crucify Wenger for his tactical decision, but I yeah. think that that was spot he on. Got that spot on, and that it was, was spot actually on. very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that was a great performance in North London. I mean, it's not London derby. It doesn't matter. You know, they say oh power shifts and all of that uh, nonsense oh, talk. Oh, that was put to bed on Saturday. Yeah, for once you cared about that. You know, it's it. it's it's all passion. It's all what do you have? Your skill, your 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 players. You know, and yeah, okay. you know. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, and it's surprising that the English press have not gone on, on Harry Kane <laughs> and Dele Ali. <laughs> you know, totally you know, you know because the, as the Arsenal Twitter handle just replied with the gif of Ozil drinking tea and. Yeah. There have been tears on my timeline. <laughs> There's been tears on my timeline. I'm wondering, <laughs> you can't eat what you serve. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was a great performance. So, the challenge now is that they take it um, to Burnley this weekend. Yeah. Uh, because, again, that's the frustrating exactly. thing about us now. The, the, the consistency is always you know, lacking. Been, that, that word consistency has been yeah. really for the past six, seven years. It's consistency. It's, I think it's really you know, I mean, it's Burnley. It's going to be a tough game because they're level on point with us. But you expect to get three points at Burnley either way. Yeah. I mean, if you're, especially if you're going to put out the same team, expect, yeah, it's going to be tough and we're going to, uh, you know, struggle a bit. But at the end of 90 minutes, you want three points. But, All you right. know, we keep our fingers crossed for that. All right, we'll keep our fingers crossed and I have to uncross it and sign out right now. <laughs> but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Debola, for having me. Day. Absolutely. Thank you. Guys, it has been Fools of Football Fans Live here on Pulse TV. Debola Adi Banjo is my name. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again on Monday. Remember, if you want to be a part of the show, do send a mail to footballfanslive at gmail.com. You could also follow me on Twitter and start a conversation on there. I am at Debola Adi Banjo. Thank you very much again. Look out for our videos on YouTube and, of course, on Pulse's Instagram page. That's at Pulse247 Nigeria. We'll be back again next Monday. You stay safe. Bye-bye.